Okay guys, what every new and or aspiring Forex trader wants to know. Now before we begin, I would, it's very important you understand what I'm about to tell you. I'm not trying to be egotistical or arrogant about, but I know exactly what you're looking for. I've been trading for 20 years. It's over two decades worth of real world experience in the trading markets and not just the Forex market. So I've been exposed really to a lot of the things you're probably either just now getting interested in, in terms of technical tools or concepts and I probably pretty much discarded at least 80 percent of the things that you probably are are trying to learn now for technical analysis. It's simply because they do not work. It's my life's passion really to to acquire some of the most powerful trading concepts that are available to technical traders and I've accumulated a pretty good toolbox over the years and it's my pleasure now to share that with you. So you want to be a Forex trader. Well, let's first congratulate you with that decision because I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I think this is the absolute best asset class there is. And that flies in the face of one of my mentors, Larry Williams, uh, opinion of the Forex market. Uh, Larry Williams is, is on record stating that the foreign exchange market is the worst place to be in. And I've come to realize that's not entirely true. Um, I, I believe that um, our mentors' opinions are beneficial to us, but we are never to be locked in to one particular person's uh, perspective. And that goes with me as well. So if I say something that does not resonate with you as a developing trader or someone that has experience, don't let that influence you in not at least seeking out that matter a little bit deeper. Um, I, I simply don't like Bollinger Bands, for instance, and you may acquire a taste for using that as a tool. Uh, so don't let my insights discourage you okay, from doing further research. Um, I'm confident that even if you deviate from my material, you will come back to it if you've sincerely given it, uh, you know, a thorough going through once or twice. Um, but I think this business is very, very beneficial, okay, to small traders because if you're trading in the stock market, how how many shares of stock can you buy of Apple right now? Uh, they just did a four to one split, I think it was. Um, now it's like ninety dollars a share at the time of this recording, but how many how many shares are you going to be able to buy if you have a thousand bucks? Not many. And if you're trading a commodity market, okay, the initial margin on some of those particular asset classes are pretty hefty as well. Okay, so and plus you're stuck inside of the um, the futures contract specification. And for instance, you know if you're trading the currency. Uh, the British pound, okay, you're stuck trading either the mid am contract or the, you know, the half of a full contract or you're trading the, the large contract, okay? So you're kind of like forced to either trade one or the other. And either one of them may not even fit your risk uh, parameters that you would need based on the equity that you, you fund your account with. That doesn't occur in the foreign exchange market. When you're trading spot retail, you have the ability to tailor your trading based on your risk adversity. And so in other words, if you are very, very uh, conservative and you don't want to trade a whole lot in terms of risk, okay, you can gear your leveraging down to very, very small risk. Now, you're not going to make a whole lot of money, okay, but you're not risking it a whole lot either. And that's really where you should be at as a developing trader, not focusing on how much money you can make. So there's a lot of rules that we're going to be putting on you, okay, and shaping your mindset as it as it were, okay, for a developing trader and how to build this into your business. But for now, okay, understand that this is an exciting adventure for you. It's something that you could do a very very uh, good living, okay, an exceptional living if 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 you if you develop accurately in terms of uh, you know the the process of becoming a um, methodical trader, rule-based trader, and uh, if you adopt a strong psychological profile for how 
your trading relates to the neophytes uh, street traders okay and really if you're watching this video you're probably in that category uh, and it's not to be offensive we all start there okay but if you understand it you you have to you have to pitch a tent there for a little while but don't move into that neighborhood you're going to eventually move out okay and move into a developmental uh you know process of developing into a professional trader so before we get into all of the uh you know specifics let's go and look at some of the rules okay to building a solid foundation as a starting developing trader now again i don't mean this to be arrogant but i know exactly what you're looking for you're probably watching this video at your job and or you just recently got off of work and you're watching videos that uh, has been shared by me and probably other people on the internet and you're pretty much daydreaming about what it would be like to get out of the rat race and I know exactly how that feels I've worked some of the most god-awful positions in terms of the uh, working class and I am pretty much the definition for, of a working class hero uh, I, I was not going to stay in that uh, industry of being a slave if you will to the man <laughs> I, I'm, I've never been wired to uh, be subordinate to anyone uh, not for a long period of time if you will um, I've always been rebellious in a lot of ways as it relates to that so I've been motivated to always find ways to you know, provide a means of uh, financial support to myself and my family and not really be d dependent upon you know the, the guy that calls himself the boss over me uh, you know to call the shots so I know exactly what you're thinking I know what you're wanting to do okay and even if you aren't being honest with your yourself and me okay if we were in in the room together some of you may say well I'm not really in this to you know to get rich well you're probably lying through your teeth okay yeah, everybody wants more money okay and greed is bad okay but it's understandable that you should want to be able to provide for your family okay and that's what I'm going to give you some skill sets to do okay I can't promise you wealth okay can you acquire wealth doing these things absolutely but I can't promise everyone being able to do that because you're all going to develop on a different uh, time frames and some of the skill sets that are going to be shared with you it's going to have to require work on your part and you may throw in a towel you may get frustrated and quit you may require more time than others okay and it's going to require your use of a demo account and you probably have already utilized a demo account a few times now um, you probably dusted it Okay, in other words, busted all the uh, the pretend money in the account, and I don't want you thinking that that's um, you know without consequence. There is an absolute bad habit uh, forming when you play around in the sandbox in a demo account, unless you're doing specific skill sets that are inherently designed for you to adopt a uh, a pain threshold. And there are some of those skills we're going to be sharing. Uh, and drills and exercises but I want you to understand that when you're in a demo account you should be treating it like it's your business okay it's like it's your account and don't open up in a demo account with fifty thousand dollars of pretend money because you're most likely chances are never going to be opening up a, a forex retail account with fifty thousand dollars if you've never traded before so I don't want you thinking that you know the answers are going to be found in forums I don't want you thinking that there's going to be this magic pill out there where you swallow it and all of a sudden you're a super trader um, there's no specific uh, method out there that's perfect mine is not perfect you're gonna lose money doing the things that I do okay but you're gonna develop as a extremely precise trader if you put the work into the tools I'm sharing and exercises and concepts I don't want you thinking that you have to go into this trading every single pair. That's not needed. Okay, you only need one real uh, particular pair. You may like the euro. You may like the Aussie uh, U.S. dollar. You might like the uh, cable. Okay, and uh, it's really a, a personal preference. Whichever one you like, pursue it. Trade it for a little while. Learn its characteristics but you don't need to be trading a whole lot of pairs and don't think that you're going to be getting rich real quick because that's why 90 percent if you believe the statistics that are shared with us fail in this business and it's not just forex it's trading 
as a whole because everyone goes into it for the same reason. They want to quit their job this month. They want to do it with no money in the account, $500. They're going to be the next guy that retires and makes it to the front of Futures Magazine or you know Trader Magazine this month, okay? And they're going to be the centerfold. I don't want you thinking like that, okay? And if you're playing a demo account and you feel that warm, fuzzy feeling when you get a win on paper trades, don't buy into that okay there's chemical reactions that release in your brain when you when you see yourself being right what you're teaching yourself okay you're teaching yourself that when you over leverage with no plan it might work out so therefore that's how you're gonna make your money and that's how you're gonna quit your job and that's not how professional traders trade that's not how working class heroes come out of the rat race and leave that that slave mentality to be a self-sufficient independent thinking profit producing trader okay d d that equation never e evolves to professional consistent trader okay that is a gambler that's the folks that go into account with live funds and dust it in 30 to 90 days okay that's statistics that's proof that's what happens and we're in the business of avoiding that okay um, every business goes into the beginning with the intent of making a profit 80% of businesses go into it with no plan and they fail. Okay, so don't be surprised if that's how you go into Forex trading. If you have no plan and you're just playing around in the demo account and you think it's going to be like lottery, okay, don't watch these videos. Okay, because really you're wasting your time and you're really, you're really doing a disservice to yourself and uh, a, a certain measure of disrespect because I'm putting a lot of em emphasis on tools and concepts for you to be empowered by but not to be uh, you know cherry pick don't go through this material and pick out what you like go through all of it now there may be tools and concepts that don't resonate with you but I have a couple of them for each stage of analysis and you can find one that really resonates with you and run with that but I don't want you thinking that you have to be uh, getting rich quick that's not what you need to be thinking here and if you've been thinking like that I want to ask you where have you gotten with that mindset you, know, you still working your job you're probably more miserable now than you did before you found Forex because it was one of those one more dead-end opportunities one more could have been but it, it's too good to be true type thing and I guarantee you by the time I'm done with you you're gonna realize that Forex is not one of those things at all Now, I know what you've been thinking, and you're probably smiling right now, I know, but think about it. You've been thinking about the likelihood of making your annual salary inside of a couple months, how well you're going to look amongst your friends, how well you're going to look amongst the opposite sex. Maybe your spouse would be much more uh, you know, um, impressed with you. Maybe your in-laws will love you more, <laughs> okay? But the bottom line is those things are external okay those things are things that are gonna cause you to feel like you have to weigh your performance to be significant and that's not what you're doing this for okay you want to be trading as a business I don't see fast food chains uh, think about it like this uh, McDonald's just about every person on every continent knows who Ronald McDonald is even though they started their business and they framed it with the foundation of a clown of all things to have as your mascot did they go in clowning around as a business no way they use that trademark image of a clown but they're absolutely dead serious about making profits and man they make profits they do very very well that's how you should be thinking you want to be thinking how can I go forward as a business owner okay with no employees except for you okay and you need to be going into this with that mindset thinking I'm gonna be turning this into a future long-term business I'm gonna be replacing my income with this very concept of extracting funds from the foreign exchange market but it's gonna come with work it's gonna to have to come with a lot of effort and it's gonna be expensive I don't charge money but I promise you, I'm going to charge you time because I have to force patience in a lot of you. 
It was forced of me. That's how I learned. The best things come with adversity. And you're going to learn that your greatest lessons are going to come with pain. Submit to the pain, submit to the adversity, and above all, submit to time. You're going to need to to relinquish this necessity to being right. Because when you start looking at the right side of that chart and not knowing what to anticipate or expect, if you haven't done the work with all the skill sets and the drills that we're going to be doing, you won't have the foundation to rely on knowing what to anticipate. You're going to be reacting like everyone else does in the retail market and lose their shirts. All right, forget what you think you know. Now, if you are one that likes to dabble in other people's methods and or resources and you like to blend, well, that ain't going to work with me. Okay, so it's going to require you to empty the glass, okay, or forget it altogether. Because if you come into my material and you want to cherry pick, you aren't going to get the benefit of the full immersion that's required to get the, 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 the macro view down to the micro view. Okay, and by having this uh, willingness on your part to just simply let go of everything you think you know, okay, and I understand it's going to be hard, okay, but I, I, I can't stress it enough that it took a lot for me to undo a lot of the things I learned in the beginning. I thought I was really being taught by some of the best uh, traders in the world by buying everyone's book out there because if they wrote a book, Obviously, they must know something that you know I don't. Well, what they did was they knew I would be buying that book, and those particular people were making their living off of buying, uh, you know, selling books. Like you know, I was their uh, their customer, and I'm confident that the majority of those authors were never really successful traders or even traded the markets ever. And I've been to pretty much everything that's available out there, and I've pretty much seen that everything there is as it relates to trading, uh, not only on the retail level, but on the institutional level, the side that most people aren't really privy to. I spent a lot of money for my education, much more than I should have, and I can tell you the majority of it was a waste of money and time. A lot of the lessons I learned, and I did have a handful of mentors, no, no, don't get me wrong, and I have a, a video on the internet that discusses where I learned my materials from and how they inspired me to get some of the other insights I gleaned from just simply going through the marketplace on a daily basis looking for opportunities. But I have been through everything and digested everything that's pretty much available as it is now. And even still to this day, I buy courses and books simply because I have the resources to do it. Two, I have the time to go through it. And three, I just want to see if there really is any truth to the scripture that says there really is nothing new under the sun. And I can tell you there really isn't anything new out there. It's just regurgitated, you know, for lack of a better word, crap, okay, that hasn't worked doesn't show any form of consistency and it's the same old carnival trick where they show things that look like they've worked on the left side of the chart but the ability for you to find that on the right side of the chart is pretty much fleeting and far and few between what I have discovered is that because everyone's drinking from that same well the water source is tainted and it wasn't until I took a step back and more or less looked at everything backwards, everything became much more clear. And it was further uh, confirmed when I got involved with folks that were much, much more uh, knowledgeable than I am. And they pretty much tapped me into a perspective in looking at the marketplace that's completely and utterly unique. Um, if you look at the books, they all tell us where to put our stop loss, and they all tell us when to buy and sell. But that's exactly where everyone puts their trades on and loses. Think about it. If that's the case, why are we doing that? Because you're being trained like a good sheep to go out and get slaughtered. Think about it. That's what's been going on all along. But nobody is willing to admit what's been set up all along. You are being programmed to lose money. It's my goal to really shock you. Because I don't want you going into thinking that this business was created, okay, for you to come in and make money. It's not. This was not designed for you to come in and make money. This is a playground for the banks. And you are sheep 
for the slaughter. If you understand how the banks operate, how the dealers operate, how the market makers manipulate the marketplace, you can ride on their coattails. But I don't want you thinking simply because you've read a book or you bought a course or you went to a workshop or you went to a seminar. I don't care how much you paid for it, how good the, rent, the mentors are. Don't think that that's all you're going to require to go in here and start making money. You need to have a little bit more information and sometimes a peek behind the curtain. And I'm pretty much the only one in the internet that really breaks it down in such a way where A, it does sound like conspiracy theory, but two, I can back it up with how the price moves, how why it moves, when it moves, and how consistently it if you know it occurs. And I've developed concepts to more or less methodically explain how those individual components are stage by stage by stage, step by step, how they unfold, what sets it up, why it's unfolding. And it really, when people are watching my videos and some of my analysis concepts that are uh, before the fact, it, it blows them away. And I don't mean, again, I'm not trying to be pompous, but it's just that's the, the shock value when you understand how the markets trade, when you are involved with someone that really knows what goes on behind the scenes, if you will, it's very, very exciting when you see the things that are discussed as probable re reactions or expectations and then it unfolds to the T, it's very impressive to neophyte and layman's. And sometimes to even traders that have been around for a while, the level of precision that are that's acquired okay, with these skill sets, it's again equally if not uh, more impressive to those because they understand how hard it is for them to, to, to you know, to pull money out of the marketplace. As a new trader, you really don't know that. You think it's like going up and pulling an apple off of a tree, okay, or pulling a you know a stack of fifties out of the money tree you think is existing in the forex market. Um, you're just seeing through rose rose colored uh, glasses. Everything looks the same to you, and it looks like you know easy money. If you don't have a plan, I guarantee you it's going to be a nightmare for you. Okay, and we're going to build on that as we go, but I want you to understand right now where you're at on the food chain and how you're going to be able to move yourself from being a sheep to a predator. Okay, and now officially I want to welcome you to your new beginning because we are about to set some ground rules for you. And I understand that we as human beings don't necessarily like rules. And if you look at the signs that put on uh, you know, the, your next door neighbor's uh, lawn, they'll say, please don't walk on our lawn, and you're walking your dog, and what do you want to do? You want your dog to go walk across that lawn, or you want to step on that lawn. Inherently, that's our nature. We want to do the very things we're not supposed to do, okay? Um, I want you to leave your ego at the door, okay? Don't, don't judge me. Don't judge the material until you've gone through it, and don't think that you're something that you really aren't. OK, um, I, I'm not impressed by people sending me emails saying that they've been trading for X, Y years and they've been doing X, Y, Z of uh, trading method and it does this and it does that. Um, I'm not interested if you're if you're that type of person. OK, again, I, I'm not in this for you to teach me anything. OK, I'm in the business of sharing my experience with you. And it's because I, it's going to be an exchange, hopefully, in time. I want your story. I want your success story. Uh, I want you to share it with me. That's why I share my real email addresses with you. Um, I spend a lot of time because my interest is really uh, pegged to what you do with this information. And I want you to be a blessing to someone else in the future. I don't want any money from you. I'm not charging any any. Uh, subscription fees or any I'm not selling you uh, webinars and seminars and books and, and all that I'm not doing those things uh, I, what I'm doing is, is I'm exchanging a relationship for a future uh, reward that's what I want I want to know what you did with this information to help someone else it may be help them buy a house it may be uh, you know buy them groceries it may be uh, helping someone that lost a job get you know, uh, reestablished okay or it may be just uh, you know giving to a charity and helping you know someone that's you know less fortunate than you are okay and you know that to me is what we've been placed on this earth for to help our neighbors okay and treat everyone like 
they're our family. And I, that's that's the motive for me doing all this. Okay, I get questioned all the time, why am I doing this? Why am I spending so much time doing these things without any monetary exchange? Um, I get more uh, return with thank yous because that's really all I'm looking for is the thank you and the future story of your success. I get more from that than you could ever do giving me money. I don't need your money. I don't want your money. Your your story and your inspiration, okay, that you share with me, and I've had a, a lot of individuals give me that over the last 17 years of teaching, okay. Um, I've had a lot of relationships on the Internet, and many times I'm brought to tears with the uh, – you know, the sheer um, inspiration that has uh, been given to me by those that have done the things that I was hoping they would do with this information. And I, yes, I've seen some people go out and try to put it in, 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 in the things and sell it. And when I find out who they are, I, I go in and I try to tear down their, their business model because I'll make available you know my time and tear down you know their their uh you know, their their business plan to, to try to take what I give away for free um I go out and I more or less cut their throat to do it for free and take away their paying subscribers and just uh, welcome them them into our fold as uh, as you know free uh members there's no there's no charging of anything with me and I don't again because I don't need your money and I'm thankful for all those that uh, take part in the currency that I've adopted for doing this, which is your thank yous and your stories of you know, inspiration, which you've done with the information. But I, it, there's something I want us all to understand going into this. As a trader, it's going to be important that you understand what type of trader you are. And it's going to come with some understanding of some internal dialogue. You need to ask yourself a lot of questions are, that are specific to developing traders, okay? Are you someone that procrastinates, okay? Do you change your mind a lot? Does it take very little to change your mind? If you think like that, that tells you a specific profile of trading is going to suit you better than another. Real quick decision making, uh, are you an irritable person um, that, that – flies off at the handle real quick, uh, you would be an excellent scalper or day trader because you can see these minor reactions in the marketplace and make a decision based on that, okay? Um, if you are very slow to make a decision and you ponder a lot, you, it takes a lot of, uh, you know, it takes a whole lot of uh, influence, you know, for you to make a decision and, and, and change your mind about something, you're a wonderful uh, position trader, a long-term trader. Yeah, if you're a uh, pretty much a happy-go-lucky guy and or gal and you're pretty much you go with the flow you could be a very good swing trader don't underestimate the power of doing this personal study and I'm encouraging you to do this for a week spend some time about some of the things that you think about how you react with your family your spouse your co-workers okay how do you feel about uh, you know, all the things that you engage on a daily basis and the decision-making process that you use to go along throughout your day. Are you quick? Are you slow? Okay. Or are you pretty much even-tempered and you pretty much can go in any environment and not really fly off the handle and not really you know, get too lethargic about making a decision? If you are really balanced, that type of trader is, in my opinion, the best because he can or she can – Position trade, swing trade, short-term trade, day trade, and scalp, okay? And that's really where we want to get to. And if you are an erratic short-term thinker, you could start off as a scalper and day trader, but eventually develop into that balanced trader where you can trade all time frames. And the same thing about that slow, pondering, decision-making uh, long-term trader. We can give you skill sets to move you closer to a more balanced way of thinking where you can change your mind a little bit shorter-term and not have to require so much in terms of uh, um, influence to decide whether or not you want to be a buyer or seller. Now, we're going to be requiring you to utilize a demo account. And I don't want you to misrepresent uh, the concepts, okay, and share, uh, you know, results that I'm not going to be impressed by. OK, uh, the demo account trading is not for you to send me pictures or screenshots and say, look, I've made this much money on paper money. OK, or I made this many pips. Your demo account is just simply for you to look at. 
nobody is supposed to be looking over your shoulder right now unless it's your spouse or your business partner that you're going to be going into business with later on down the road if you don't have enough money to go into this with live funds. But I don't want you also to going into uh, a demo account with more money than you intend to trade with. Okay, and that may be a little bit of a constraint because some of you may have less than five thousand dollars that you, you know, that you intend to trade with. Uh, in that case, um, there's a lot of demo accounts that you can open up with five thousand. Um, if that's the case, uh, whatever your demo account balance is when you open it up, only trade with the leverage that you would be able to trade with using the operating ex uh, ex equity that you would have. In other words, if you're only going to have a thousand dollars, then that's all you use, regardless of how much free margin you have in that demo account. You're not teaching yourself anything except for bad habits by over leveraging or doing things that you wouldn't be doing with the amount of money you plan to fund your live account with over time. Do not underestimate the power of making bad habits form with demo account trading. Okay, Demo account trading is given to you as a free tool by brokers. Now I want you to think about this. Why would they do that? Because if you went into this with real, real, real live funds with no understanding of what you're doing, you'd lose your money right away, and you would, you know, you wouldn't feel good about none of it. Okay, or your first losing trade, you would close your your, your trade your trading account and be done with it. What happens is, is they give you a demo account. And you play around in the demo account, you over leverage, you take a million trades in one day, and your mind is only going to focus on, on the good ones, the winning trades. And it's just like anything else, a casino. Everybody, everyone knows that 90% of people that go into a casino lose their money. So why do people go into the casinos by the busloads? They fly out to Vegas, they fly out to Atlantic City, they go you know, around the world to uh, you know, these real high-end casinos. Why? Because they want to be that one winner. They want to have that one winning experience. They want to have that, that rush of having had that, that, that winner's mentality. Even if it's just for one time. They want that excitement. The what if it does happen factor. Well, I don't want you having that as a trader. Especially as a developing trader. I want you to understand that you are a losing trader every single time you put a trade on. Every trader is a losing trader as soon as they click the execution. When they click to get into that market, they are a loser from the beginning. Okay? And we all have to trade out of that losing position. And how well we're able to do that defines our longevity and our career as a trader. Treat the demo account like it's your business equity. All right, now it's time to be honest. Now you've probably been playing with the uh, $50,000 demo account and you've overtraded, you over leveraged just to see what happens. Now when you get these emotional charges from doing that, what it's doing is, is mentally reinforcing that that's the goal. You want to feel good about the trading. That's not how you develop as a trader. You want to remove the emotion. You don't want to have emotional attachment to the trades. Take the emotion out by keeping the leverage low. It's not about making a lot of money fast. It's about making consistent money over time. I promise you, as we work towards the end goal here, you'll see very quickly that you only need a small amount of equity, a small amount of return, and a lot of consistency and to do very, very well. And it doesn't take a whole lot of effort, really, or work to be consistent, but it does take a lot of patience. Okay, And there's going to be a paradigm shift that's going to be needed Okay, for some of you have, that have already wasted a lot of time playing around in demo accounts. Okay, forget all that nonsense. You need to understand that this is going to be an expensive journey. You need to forget your ego, take all those things, and leave it at the door. You are a new trader. You are a completely blank slate. And your demo account is representative of the decision-making process that you are going to develop as a new trader and how you interact with the marketplace based on the equity that you intend to trade with and the leverage that's used with sound risk management and money management. Now, obviously you just heard me say we're not trying to get rich quick because in the beginning you don't run. You learn to crawl, then you learn to stand, try not to fall down, and when you do fall down try not to get hurt too badly then you walk, 
and you walk briskly, and then you can run. Then eventually you can sprint. But all too often everyone puts their money in the account and they sprint, and they just quickly lose all their money. You don't need a whole lot of pips. Don't think that it's the, that's the answer. Okay, I see a lot of guys that sell their wares on the internet. That you, you know, our system makes twenty thousand pips a year. Okay, I've made eighty percent accuracy with eighty you know eighty million pips in the last five years. You don't need a lot of pips. Okay, if you can consistently carve out a specific return, a very low end return. Okay, mind you. If you consistently do that and you manage your money appropriately, you're going to use the compounding effect to build your equity over a period of time. And you don't need a whole lot of money and you don't need a lot of uh, return percentage-wise. So discard whole that whole mentality that you need a whole lot of pips. Discard the whole, I got to trade every single day. That's not, that's not essential. Okay. What you need to be thinking is I can do a very, very good career with less than several hundred pips per month. And I'm going to show you that as we go. Now it's important that you stay rooted in the reality of who you are as a trader. Don't go into this with the development process and when, as soon as you start seeing consistency, don't let your head inflate. Okay, you're not you're not going to get anywhere by inviting ego. That's the same thing as emotion. By having that come into your trading and at, into that development, okay, you're going to plague your development. You're gonna you're gonna cause pitfalls, okay, that are just waiting to open up and swallow you. Don't go under the forums and measure yourself against everyone else. Don't go in there bragging that you've been you've been the superstar student okay and you've done xyz uh, results with the information so that you know therefore you know you're better than everyone else okay i'm not impressed by that in fact i'll shoot you down in a private email or a, a pm if i see he's doing it okay because it's not beneficial to you nobody wants to hear it anyway it doesn't make them feel good about themselves it looks arrogant it looks pompous but more importantly it's detrimental to your development because you, what you're doing is you're inflating your ego you don't want that to happen, okay? Uh, there, when you enter the marketplace, you are a sheep every single time until you close the trade as a profit, okay? And then that's what makes you a predator. That's when you leave the sheep level of the food chain and you go up to the higher level where you're the apex predator. So you might think right now, okay, you might have the right stuff, but I promise you, if you have that mentality and you're very egotistical, your tombstone's already being carved out with your name in it. You're you're going to be in the trader's graveyard. You will be in that graveyard of people that dusted their account. It's just going to be a matter of time because you're inviting ego, you're inviting fear and greed, and emotions are going to be responsible, okay, for your downfall. All right, I've already said it earlier, but you got to relax. It doesn't take much. Now I know. You probably hear a lot of guys talking about how many pips they've made over the last week or two or today or yesterday or the last year. Don't fall into that trap. Okay, don't fall into that trap. I'm going to show you how you can make less than 25 pips per week. And that's, yes, total for the whole week, risking no more than 2%. You can more than double your account every single year. Now, how do you do that? All you have to do is earn a measly old 6% return per month. Now, some of us that have been around this business for a while or in speculation, 6% return is astronomical, okay? But I know some of you aren't impressed by that because you're thinking, if I'm going to open up my account with $200 and I double it in a year, I'm only going to have $400. Plus, i got to pay taxes on that money. Then, the next year, my $400 is going to double to $800. How am I going to get rich doing that? Well, it's not about thinking getting rich quick I've already told you that but if you are able to do this if you think like this if you have a thousand dollars of speculative capital you allow time to do its work making less than 25 pips okay it works out to be about uh, 23 pips if you do the math if you do that okay and say you average 25 pips you would be turning that one thousand dollars inside of 10 years you would have made over a million dollars. 
doing this approach. Now, I'm going to ask you something. Do you see yourself 10 years from now, okay, having a million dollars? Doing what you do, knowing what you know, going to the job that you go to work at every single day. Do you see yourself having a million dollars 10 years from now? If that's not true, okay, then you need to be making some changes. Ask yourself this. Say say you've been messing around with Forex in the last couple of years and you've never found any stride. You're just spinning your wheels. How can you uh, feel good about what you've done with your time? Obviously, it's it's demoralizing, and I know what that feels like. I've went through that. I've done that, not with Forex, but with, with futures trading. I got lucky going in initially. Then I had to learn how to be a trader, okay, because I lost money. And then I had to forget a lot of things, and it's painful. That, that stuff's painful. I could have made a whole lot more money than I have now if I would have known the things I'm sharing with you right now for free. But ego got into my way. And then fear got in my way, and then desperation, and I was, you know, I was, every, I went through every possible scenario. But I want you to a answer a question. If you've been a losing trader, I want to ask you, even if you only made five pips, okay, profit for the whole month, wouldn't that be better than you have right now? Now imagine if you slowly build to a point where you can consistently make 6% a month and you're doubling your money every year. Banks right now are paying less than a quarter percent. If you can get that for a whole year and you can turn 100 pips a month with 2% risk, you're doubling your money every single year. That's phenomenal. If you did just 3%, that's phenomenal okay in terms of returns you can carve out an amazing career but it's going to take discipline consistency and time if you haven't been consistently drawing a, a return that's comparable to this my question is this how are you feeling now thinking that it only took this much in terms of return in terms of pips as well per month to be able to double, double your account did you double your account last year? How about the year before that? How about are you on track this year to double your account? I'm not teaching that you have to double your account, guys. I'm just stating that this is what you can expect with very, very low expectations and realistic returns in mind. Avoid the trader's graveyard, guys. Um, I want to leave you with some really important points here as it relates to over trading and over leveraging. Um, I've been a victim of this in my trading as a futures trader. I know what it's like to just totally decimate your accounts and yes I said accounts that was plural. Uh, I've went through a lot of money um, trying to do the, the get rich quick stuff and even though I had a winning system um, my over leveraging undermined it and it caused me to get out of trades sooner than I should have or hold on to losing trades longer than I should have and what would have been a minor loss became a huge loss okay and that's what it's all about you know you, you got to keep your risk low keep your over leveraging um, at bay don't over leverage your account and you understand by the previous uh, discussion we had about having 25 pips or less with 2% risk, you know, that's 6% return per month compounded over the year. That's more than 100% return on your account. There's no rush for you to get rich quick, okay? Doctors don't come out of med school right away making a million dollars, okay? They got to get their practice started. They got to grow into that field as well. But they're paying an arm and a leg, no pun intended, for that education to get to be a practitioner of medicine. You are going to have to put that time in as well. And you can't avoid it, and you can't make shortcuts with overtrading and overleveraging. It never works. Trust me, just don't do it. Now, it doesn't require long hours. I know a lot of you guys think you got to be in front of your charts all the time. And if you see this little picture, <laughs> that was me. That was me as a new trader. Okay, I would work 13 hours a day, and then I'd spend umpteen hours, okay, you know throughout the week looking at charts and having very little sleep and then going back out and going to work again. So 
my biggest advice to you, if that's what you're thinking, is don't. Don't think that, okay? Uh, here's what I'd like you to do. I would like you to do another little study, and I want you to um, bracket out on, uh, on your charts. Mark out 7 in the morning, New York time, to 10 o'clock in the morning, New York time. And I want you to mark out 2 o'clock in the morning, New York time, and 4 o'clock in the morning, New York time. Just those two little uh, windows of time. And I want you to look at what takes place on a daily basis and do that for a month. I want you to uh, you know, determine how much of a move took place and what time those uh, moves began and when they ended each day. And I want you to understand that those three hours twice a day is all you need. And you only need one of those per day. Okay? You only need one of those per week. You only need one of those per month to make that 6%. If you do your leveraging, your risk management, and your trade selection properly. Now think about it. How does that contrast to what you think right now? That you got to be trading every single day, every session, and you got to make a million pips. Quickly, quickly, this is becoming much more reasonable and realistic, don't you think? Okay, let's look at a chart and discuss some of the things that are beneficial as a foundation uh, to some of my materials and also give you something to really study on a daily basis when you're looking at your charts. Um, it's probably um, something you may not have noticed if you're a new trader, but this chart actually gives you a whole lot of information just staring at the candlesticks themselves and the way price action moves within each swing. Um, the the pattern I'm going to show you now is very very important going forward. It's going to be referred to a lot in my material and it's actually the framework for a lot of the price action analysis concepts that you're going to learn through um, all of the coursework that I'm presenting here. We're going to be talking about swing points okay and swing points are really defined as such we're going to show you this is one candle and to the left of it will be another candle and to the right of it will be another okay and this is a crude depiction of a swing high okay the swing high is delineated by a lower high on the left and a lower high on the right with a higher candle in the middle okay and you probably guessed a swing low is simply a low that has two higher lows surrounding it in other words you have one higher low on the left one higher low on the right okay um, sometimes when we uh, are in technical circles and we're discussing uh, swing points uh, many times you'll hear a swing low um, represented by having something like this. Okay, and they, in other circles um, that teach or, or, or share ideas, they'll say that this is a swing low because it's qualified by having two higher lows on the right and two higher lows on the left. Um, to me, uh, as long as we have the three bar pattern here, that's sufficient enough for me. And if you are relying on the marketplace to give you that much time, the market's already really moved away from an ideal location down here for entry. Okay. So what I'm teaching you is I'm trying to train your eye to look at where uh, swing points are occur and how they form and how you can get very very close to the reaction points where price is going to be moving aggressively up or down away from those particular price points so now what you want to do is you want to pick right now I have an Australian USD H4 or in other words a chart comprised of each candle delineating four hours worth of time okay so in other words every vertical line or vertical candle represents four hours worth of time 
Okay, so this is the highest high in that four hour period, and this is the lowest low in that four hour period. Okay, now what I want you to do is when you go through your charts, okay, this could be in any time frame, but I use the four hour simply because um, I like the four hour. It can be used for day trading, it could be used for swing trading, uh, short term trading, uh, even position trading if you know what you're looking for in terms of higher level support and resistance. But for now, what we're going to look at is we're going to discuss the importance very briefly, and we're going to build on this obviously as we go along. But I want you to notice that you have a lower high to the left of this candle, and we have a lower high to the right of this candle. Okay, so that makes this three bar pattern, in other words, this candle, this candle, and this candle a swing high. Okay, so we're going to take that swing high and we're going to look at two price points as it relates to this. Okay, see that? What I've delineated here is the range from the highest high and the lowest low that make up that entire three bar pattern. Okay, you see that? This is the lower of the three candles. If this candle in the middle was lower than this candle on the right of the three bar pattern, then I would have that level noted there. But the lowest, in other words, in terms of the total range between all three candles combined, where's the highest high, where's the lowest low? That's what we're looking for, okay? You wanna have this in your mind as you're looking at your charts. Now, you're going to see very quickly doing this, you could have a whole lot of lines on your chart, but the concept is what we're trying to arrive at. So that way, when you can clearly see the swing points on your chart, you won't need to have this many lines on your chart. Okay? But this is one particular range that is influential okay, to our price action analysis concepts. Okay? Every price point between the high and low okay on each candle being the low the high the open and close of each candle is also a sensitive price point okay but for now we're just going to identify the total range that makes up that swing high the same thing occurs when we look at swing lows okay we have a swing low here we have a, a low with a lower low and a higher low okay you see that here's that three bar pattern okay now what we're going to do is we're going to delineate that and then we're going to use the high because it's this candle let's change the color of that just to differentiate okay we're using the high candle here of the three bar pattern so this is the highest of the range and this candle's low is the lowest okay now watch what happens now we've delineated that range, okay? So we have a swing low and a swing high, okay? So now what we're doing is, is we're, we're breaking the market down and we're looking for potential reaction points, okay? This swing low, you can see clearly later in time, price came up to that same price level and look what happened. Did it stay there very long? Absolutely not. And the market repelled and went lower, okay? So now, Let's go back and go through some more examples, and we're going to ferret out another swing low. Okay, and what I've done is, is I've noted this swing low. So you have a, a candle with a low, with a higher low on the left, and a higher candle on the right. Okay, so all all three candles okay one has the low with a higher low on either side and it's only taking three candles to do that okay now you're probably asking why am i skipping over this little one here because this would be a swing low yes well it's because we're looking at this is a sunday okay so I, you kind of like take that into uh into your equation um when you have these little, little tiny sundays um I guess a general rule of thumb would be if we have a big range Sunday, then I would use it. But if it's a real small little uh, uh, candle, usually it's typical of a Sunday, um, then I won't factor that in. But for now, we're just going to look for the most obvious swing points. Okay. So again, using the premise that we've already established, the candle highs and candles low, uh, we have a swing low here. We've mapped out the highest point and the lowest point. And you just draw that out a little bit. Now, obviously, 
you want to have these levels in mind okay, as you look at your chart. Okay, and again, going back to the, the premise that if we put every single line that's available using this concept on your chart, you would quickly be inundated with so many levels it would be it would be confusing to you. Okay, but you'll see after a period of time, you'll adopt um, an eye for price swings and the ones that are going to be more um, useful to you will become obviously much more apparent as time goes on. Okay, but right now in the beginning, you don't have that uh, understanding uh, or the ability to see what you should be seeing. Okay, and this is how you develop the eye for it. Okay, so we have the swing low here, move math up the highest high and the lowest low. We have a swing high here. Okay, we have swing low, we have another swing low in here. Okay, but Look at what we've done here. We've we've made this price point just like this, okay? Swing low, a higher low and a higher low on either side of it. Why would be why would we look at this level and this level when we're pretty much very close to it with this range already? You see that? Okay? So when price levels are very close like that, I just use the ones that are very clear. This is a pretty important swing low versus this one. Okay, see so this swing low is occurring inside of the range that's been established by this swing low here. Okay, it's from the range low to the range high. This short-term swing low is inside of that range. So this to me is going to be subordinate or less influential in terms of future uh, prognostication in terms of price action. This range is going to be much more significant later on. Okay, so in other words, we're, we're going to apply strength, okay, uh, factors to which price points we use for swing highs and swing lows. Okay, so now we have a swing high. Okay, and we're going to use our different color to delineate, delineate that as well. Okay, and see what we have here. This big breakdown here. The lowest low in the three bar pattern, okay, for the swing high, is this candle here, okay? Look at all the price trading that takes place around that price point, okay? Look at the open and closings of these candles, look at the highs, look at the bodies of the candles in here, okay? You even had some reaction in here as well later on. And that's all working within this dealing range between this low and this high, okay? And again, what we're mapping out is the swing high's extreme points, okay? And you can see, look at the body of the candle here. See, we wicked through the previous swing high here. Notice we didn't do a whole lot of trading there. The bodies of the candles were both below that. Okay, so these are, these are the building blocks, if you will, to understanding very, very advanced price action concepts that you're going to learn later on. But for now, what we're going to be doing is just getting you used to seeing the price swings and swing highs and swing lows and mapping them out so that way we can see future price sensitivity to those same particular levels. And by understanding what you're doing, by applying these concepts, you'll start to see and anticipate really, which is, which the, which is the powerful concept that you're supposed to be gleaning from this, learning to anticipate price rejections once it trades these levels because if price was able to repel away from that particular level at a earlier time chances are that probably we'll see that same effect happen at a later time okay so we have a swing high here okay and I'm going to show you the lows are pretty much equal right in here okay this low and this low of the three bar pattern that makes the swing high up we have price sensitivity right there, beautifully done, beautifully, okay? Comes back up again, okay? And it trades through this level and trades right back up into what level? This sensitive level, okay? Then it creates another swing high, okay? You see that? So now we're gonna have lowest low. Bring this over here a little bit so I'm not confusion you too much. So we have the swing high in here, okay, and the lowest low, and just for completeness sake, again, I 
I didn't want to show that, but it is what it is. We're going to reveal it to get the, the chart where I need it. Okay, so here is the the high of that swing high, or the, the extreme upper range of that high right here, and the low. Okay, so we have this candle, this candle, and this candle making the swing high. The lowest price point is right here. Okay, so inside these two price points, there should be future sensitivity. Okay, again, keying off of the open high lows and close of the three bars or three candles that make up the swing high and swing low. Okay, we have a swing low in here. And what we'll do is, is we'll mark that out. And the highest high inside the swing low between this candle, this candle, and this candle, the highest high is here, and the lowest low is here. Okay, so we'll be looking for future sensitivity inside of that range. Okay, and you can see there was a very nice swing low formed here. Violated it just a little bit. Okay, and then what would we form? Another swing low. Notice we're not going to need to draw another line because this level is already represented with this level back here, okay? And this high candle, okay, is already delineated with this range here. So see how this price swing is subordinate, okay, inside of this swing low. So there's no necessity for us to fine tune any levels in here because it's already been predetermined with the range from this swing low, okay? Now we have this swing high, okay? See that? We have a high, a higher high, and a lower high. So we have a high with two lower candles to either side of it. Okay, so making that three bar swing high pattern we like to look for. So when you see that, what we can do again is you take your your levels here and you draw that. And what I'm doing is I'm just gathering this candle here because I really want to show the, the very clean symmetry that's presented with this um, sample set in terms of price action. And looking at the lowest low, it's this candle here, because this is the lowest candle between all three candles of the sweet and high pattern. Okay, and let's just go forward a little bit. We have a new swing low down here. Okay, so we have this low here. And the highest high of the swing low pattern is right here. So it's the three bar pattern low. Okay, the highest price point in three uh, candles is this price point, and the lowest low is here. Okay, and we're going to be looking for price sensitivity going forward. Okay, and now we have a unique uh, opportunity okay to show you where price creates uh, kinda like a muddy little swing point okay see how these price points are basically the same okay if you look very carefully you have price essentially trading almost at the same price point Okay, see that? If you look real, real close, this candle is slightly um, higher than this one and this one. Okay, and again, we have that same like Sunday phenomenon, I guess, uh, with these small little candles. So, when I have something like this, what I do is, is I look at the overall consolidation. Okay, um, I see the bodies and the wicks. Okay, see how the wick is here, the body of the candle here, the body of the candle here low here okay when I see that I will assume that price is still going to uh, respect if you will this swing low that we have the higher range here and also now this is a little small little trading range so this to me I would look for a, the bullish move up okay in other words this 
the, the, the candle that goes up, I'll have more weight on that. And we'll talk a lot more in that uh, principle later on. But in this example, I would just simply refer to the bullish candle up. In other words, in other words this is a, the white candle. They're, they're bullish candles as it represents in this uh, example and black candles are down um, I would spend more emphasis looking at the low here but again going back to our principle that we already have a level that's already delineated next to that so there's no essential uh, need for us to draw a new level okay so we've already uh, delineated a specific uh, price point for future sensitivity price comes up to that same level here creates a swing high we have an, uh, the lowest low is here, which has already been established with this level here, so there's no necessity to draw a new line. Uh, we have a swing low here with the highest of the three pattern here, very close to this level. Again, no necessity to draw another level. And look at the price action. It's traded right off of that level. See that? See that right there? Wonderful. Beautiful representation of very classic price action. I'm going to give you some more data to, to, just to show you how price had respected the previous levels and what had transpired from that price, that price point. Okay, you see that? All right. So now, when you look at your charts, you're going to be spending a lot of time searching for swing points, swing highs and swing lows. Okay, looking for levels inside of the ranges that create those swing highs and swing lows. And you're going to eventually spend a lot of time studying the sensitivity of future price action at the specific open, close, high and low of each of the three bar pattern. In other words, we have these three candles here that make up the swing low here. Okay, we have an opening at this price point and the close is down here on this candle. We have an opening on this candle and a close here. We have an opening here on this candle and a close here. Okay. Remember what I just told you, the opening, the, uh, the highs, the lows and close of all three of those candles are sensitive. Okay. They're very, very key price points. Look at the closing price on this candle here, the highest price point of all three closes. Okay. Let's go out in time and look at what happens. Boom. Look at the sensitivity right there. Even though we had already leveled out this swing price point right here, price stabbed through it, stabbed through it, stabbed through it, stabbed through it. Look at the bodies of the candles. See how that was very, very uh, uh, well staved off in terms of not being able to go lower. Yes, we wicked through with an air price action, but look what the bulk of the trading was above that level. Okay? And just simply refer back to this closing price and you can see that is very very close to what was being uh, referred to. Also, look at the high of the very lowest candle. See the high? Look at that. Go right out in time. Boom. Okay? Look at the high of this candle. Okay? Boom. Okay, even this candle here came right back down to what? This price point. Okay, so when you're sitting in front of your computer and looking at charts, don't blindly just stare at them expecting a neon sign to tell you, hey, look, you know, here's something to do or the next trade. Study how price has traded in the past and it'll give you a whole lot of information and it'll give you a lot of uh, foundation that you need to be a price action trader and essentially, uh, you know, putting you ahead of the pack, if you will, and you'll be able to warm up a lot quicker to the more advanced concepts that we'll share as we go along. Now, above all, it's important that you keep a balance in this. Don't become overly compulsive feeling that you have to be in the marketplace, in charts, in forums, in my videos, okay? Your spouse wants to see you, okay? And you should be wanting to see your spouse and your children as well. And your friends want to see you too. Get out there and make sure you have a life. Learning this stuff is fun. It's 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 amazing the the rewards you get with it. But if you're not engaging the other parts of your life, you will be coming uh, you know, 
it's an unhealthy relationship with the marketplace. So don't try to think because you got to spend a million hours of, uh, of study in the charts and that in the beginning that it, you're not going to get yourself a shortcut by doing that. Yes, it's important you spend time. Okay, and then my advice is to spend at least 30 minutes a day looking at your charts, doing the things that we talk about. Over time, will give you skill set. Uh, principles and and drills and exercises to do that'll help you acquire certain uh you know price action uh understanding but it's not important that you spend five or six hours a day i did all that stuff okay and yes i eventually gleaned some things but in the beginning it was a lot of wasted time because i just simply didn't know what i was looking for now i know what i'm looking for had i known now what I what I should have been looking for then, my learning curve would have been greatly in, uh, shortened, and that's my goal here with you guys. So don't try to skip to the front of the line because you're not going to be the one that does it. And if you've been trading for a while and you've been trying different things and it hasn't been working out for you, I'm going to give you the real answer to it. It's not the system, and it's not going from one system to the next. This is not. The, the hand gets cold, go to the next best thing. You're going to quickly learn that you are the biggest enemy. You are the one that causes all these problems. And I know it sounds hard to swallow, but you're going to have to admit it. No one else pulls the execution trigger but you. No one else can do that but you. So you're in charge of all these decisions. When you understand that, you're the one in the captain's chair. You're the you're the one at the helm, if you will. This sink, uh, this ship either sinks or or sails smoothly, based on your decision making. Don't think that you got to go in here with a perfect system. You just need something that's going to consistently carve out a expected return, and then you maximize that edge or that return to get the outcome that you're looking for, which is consistent, profitable pip harvesting that results in you being able to eventually move into a self-sufficient lifestyle where all your living living expenses are acquired through your trading and your decisions making in the marketplace. Alright, so now what can we expect to learn going forward? Well, it's my intention obviously to share with you what I've learned over the last 20 plus years. Now, there's going to be a lot of mix of not just simply foreign exchange, but there's going to be a lot of commodity information that I interweave with this because there's a lot of price action concepts that's complementary to the foreign exchange markets. I'm going to teach you how you can manage risk and trades and how you can target consistency. I'm going to teach you specifically how to determine which direction to trade any pair. I'm going to also spend time with exercises and drills and skill sets to help you time low risk and high reward entry points. You're going to learn how to project in advance high odds profit objectives, where to make your uh, profits and how to take profits. I'm going to show you how well in advance when and where trades will form. A lot of questions I get in a lot of email is they'll ask, you know, I want to know when to get in, when to get out. Well, unless you understand how the trades are setting up, the in and out isn't going to help you. I'm going to teach you specifically how to track smart money traders like the banks, and you're going to learn how to follow them. Now, also, I'm going to give you a lot of tips on how to build your Forex business that are completely unique to me and my material. So I want you to understand that this is my sincere hope, and it's my goal for you to be profitable, to be successful, and I want your success story. I, I covet that. I want you to be able to be successful so that way I know you'll be able to move forward in life using this information to bless other people. When you do, I'm not saying that you won't, okay? I'm telling you that if you put the time into this, you will find success. The amount of success is going to be obviously independent upon each individual trader and their development. But when you do, please share your story with me that's all I'm asking for a simple thank you and what you've done for someone else for your family for a complete perfect stranger what did you do to bless them you may not be a person of faith you may not believe in a God but isn't it just nice to know that you did something very very nice for someone else and not expect anything in return I can't tell you the wonderful feeling that gives me doing things like this.
and I hope that you are passionate enough to return the currency that I'm exchanging I'm giving you my life work just for a story and I want you to share that with me and you can always reach me at innercircletrader at gmail.com or ICT at the innercircletrader.com and until I hear from you in the future or when we talk again in the next session I wish you good luck and good trading